Hello and welcome to this London tutorial in Tesla coil style lightning. So, well, as you can see from this model I have in front of me on the screen, I have absolutely no idea how a Tesla coil works. So please tell me everything that's missing from this in the comments. And hey, I'll learn something as well as you. Hey, nice. So there's basically two objects here. There's the one that the lightning comes from and there's the one that the lightning goes to. Single end of the lightning, forked end of the lightning. You get the general idea. And so I'm now going to go to another layer. I'm going to go uh, Shift C to center the cursor. Shift A to add a cube uh, tab to go into edit mode. Hold down control and I'm going to move it up one blender unit. This now puts the origin of the object in the middle of the bottom face of the cube, which is exactly where I want it to be. So now I'm actually going to go in to weight paint and I'm going to paint the top four vertices of the cube red. Now this means that there are created a um, vertex group called group. These top vertices are entirely in the group and these bottom vertices are entirely not in the group. And now I'm going to go back to edit mode and press Control R and I'm going to roll the middle mouse button to bring that up to two loops that are going um, that way around, not that way around or that way around, but that way around. And, and, and now if we go back into uh, weight paint, we can now see that those vertices are automatically like a third of the way between them in terms of being in this vertex group. Interesting. I'm going to press A so it's not all selected. On edge select, by the way, which is very important. I'm going to press Shift, Alt, right click to select this loop. And I'm going to press Alt M and merge these vertices at the center. And it's going to uh, face select there and Alt M, Alt merge vertices at center. And what do we do now? Select that, that, alt merge at center, do, 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 U, and then there's the load of lines that we're just going to using shift click to select all of them and delete edges. So we've now got this kind of forked tree. And the reason why we did this in this particular way is it's very hard to weight paint this tree because, well, if I go into weight paint mode now, I can't see anything. I've got no idea how weighty any of these vertices are. So this is our lightning fork. It's a bit bland at the moment. So I'm just gonna select these middle vertices. Oh, I'm on vertice select at the minute. So allow me to click the vertices. I could still have done it in edge mode like and I'm going to click smooth vertex and let's just shift it down a bit and we can sort of shift that one eh. the reason we did that vertex painting earlier is we can now use a shrink wrap modifier so if I uh, where is it it's in deform isn't it shrink wrap and we can set the target that's actually let's turn on that other layer again and I'm going to move this up so its center is in the center of this, the thing emanate, the thing from which the lightning emanate, the thing from which the lightning emanates. I've still not managed to get it right, even doing it at that speed. So you're gonna to have to uh, forgive my big floppy tongue that's incapable of human speech. And I've, you see, I've scaled it up so it's touching the top of the cage here. On this shrink wrap modifier, it's not really doing anything. So I'm going to select the target using this um, eyedropper and select this cage. And now it's all connected to the cage, which is not exactly what we want. So we're going to select the vertex group group. And now the top of it's connected to the cage. And now making sure that the pivot point is the median point, i.e. the object origin, I'm just going to press double R, press R twice. And now it's, as you see, this is kind of the ends of the thingy are always on the edges of the cage. It still just doesn't really look like not lightning yet. So we're going to go add a uh, subdivision surface. So ramp this up to 
four or oh, five even why not it's a very simple object now it's starting to look a bit better we're also getting a problem that I'm not sure if you're seeing it at the moment if I go into side view and then rotate it round a bit it's not actually touching the either this or that so I'm just going to go well we could do that by going to simple how does that look I mean that does that does solve it and of course the next stage we're going to go to displace modifier uh, we're going to have a new texture in the displace um, and we're going to go into here and it's oh it's already selected displace there texture 01 and we're not going to have an image we want a clouds texture set to color soft is good and if we go back to the modifiers panel we can now make the um, direction be RGB to XYZ and we now have it's all kind of squiggly criggling around and if we now go double R again we now see that it just kind of nicely kind of spiders webs like lightning around there and we're getting closer and closer to what we want the next thing to do just going to add ourselves an empty uh, plane access uh, the axis which I'm also going to move to this center point of this um, here uh, I'm going to scale it up by four so that's s followed by four and let's call it uh, I'm going to call it frazzle and um, select this thing again and going to the displace modifier we want the texture coordinates to be object and you guessed that the object we want is frazzle so now if we press double r to rotate this we now sort of fizzily lightening the thing quite nicely and i think i want a bit more detail on that so i'm going to click on this go to um texture buttons again and let's add a bit more depth to that so that now it's proper wriggly little lightning let's rotate that that's looking good and so is that at the moment if we set to render it and it doesn't take too long so i can talk this through there's nothing there there's no there's no lightning whatsoever because well there's no actual surfaces on this object it's just a line so we want to fix that we want to fix that with a skin modifier which when it comes up first of all it looks pretty awful so I'm just going to press tab into edit mode again and A till we're selecting all and then this is a key press that makes no obvious sense control A I'm going to scale that down so it's, it's proper thin here's a little addendum to explain the control A bit of the uh, skin modifier so if I add a skin modifier to this cube and as you can see it sort of builds a, a skin around all the um, edges of it but more than that, if I go into edit mode, I can then select a vertex and press Ctrl A to scale the size of the skin around that one, around that one, or I could select all of the vertices and press Ctrl A to scale it around all of them. It's well thin, but it is in existence. So now, that's kind of nice. Yep, yep, this is looking good. We can also, what else can we do? We, I mean, we could do things like, we could have the skin modifier before the displace modifier, and now you see the width of the lightning is all a bit randomer. That's a personal taste thing. I mean, we could turn down the amount that we subsurface it if we want a bit more cartoony lightning that's obviously made out of a series of um, straight lines. That's an option as well. Um, I mean we could if we go back into here we could decide that we want it to be a bit fatter at the stem and from this I'm going to go to um, this proportional editing thing and go to connected and select that vertices vertex there and control a scale that up so the stem and you can roll the middle mouse button to 
bringing up this circle that affects which vertices are affected and which aren't. So it gets, so we can make it get thicker in the in the middle there. And then we select it all all of them and Control A, and we can scale them all down. So we have more variance on the width of the lightning. That's looking pretty nice there. And of course, we want it to actually be light lightning that emanates light rather than, I mean, if we render it now, what have we got? We've got like this kind of grey, white, plasticky thing in it that doesn't really work on any level. So that's kind of important. I'm also going to turn on this layer that has the ground in as well. So, right, new material. Let's call it lightning. And it's not going to be a diffuse, it's going to be emit. And what we, we want it to be blue, but white. So we want the actual lightning itself on the render to be bright white, but we want the glow from it to be kind of blue tinted. So I'm going to we do select the color and I'm going to go to hex and I'm going to go 8888FF. So that's 88 is halfway and FF is up all the way. So, I mean, you can see this on that, well, except that it kind of isn't. But yeah, it's some blue, but there's some, there's some of each of red, green and blue, but there's much more of blue than anything else and the emission strength let's try oh i don't know 20 and let's see what that looks like yeah that's looking that's looking pretty good um i'm happy with that so i think the last thing we need to do with it well i need to set up the animation of it so i'm not actually having to twiddle the position of it as it renders i'm not quite sure how that would even work so let's well let's we'll finish off the um, going to the node editor and we want to go to compositing nodes use nodes backdrop and auto render uh, hold down shift drag across there add a output viewer so we can see what we're doing shift a we're going to add a filter a glare so now yeah that's kind of looking better already i like to set streaks to six and have an angle of 10 degrees on this and if i want it to look kind of christmasy i uh, select that and go 0.75 and there we've got I don't know, we might want to bring the threshold down. There's a load of numbers to twiddle here as well. See what happens if we uh, make have the lightning be literally the only source of light in the scene. There's still, there's still enough light for it to be lighting up this diffuse texture on the ground here. That actually does look pretty cool. I'm liking that. I might use that in the preview, that setup. Whoa. I mean, we might want to use a fog glow rather than if we go to the node editor. We might want to go from streaks to fog glow. One thing we ha do actually have to do, which we haven't done yet, is to start animating this. So I'm going to drag up that to there. We want to go to the graph editor. And I've already somehow set a keyframe that I didn't mean to do, but it's not necessarily a problem. So we've got a rota lo rotation location scale on frame zero. I'm happy with that. Let's go to frame 100 and RR. Let's move it to there and scroll out. In fact, I'm going to press the home key and then scroll out with the middle mouse button again to get that in view. And I'm going to go to channel, extrapolation mode, linear extrapolation. And that just sort of moves around. I want it to move faster than that. Let's move that um, C for circle select, grab X. Yeah, that's looking good. Um, and this, um, which, as you remember, is the thing that controls this. Oh, that's a point. We could actually move it around. But I'm going to... Oh, yeah, let's go to frame 40, because that worked better. Press double R, rotate that, 
basically doing exactly the same with this um, empty as we were doing with the lightning but again kind of random because we don't want them to be moving in time with each other channel extrapolation mode linear extrapolation and now it's all doing quite nicely I mean so I could just duplicate this and I'm not going to move it then I'm going to shift right click this and control P for parent to object so we've got a second one of them that's um, parented to this uh, frazzle empty and now though they start at the beginning they sort of both of them go their own separate ways I kind of like that I think that's looking pretty nice so there you go there's a uh, tutorial on Tesla coil style lightning let's have another render of it see what it looks like okay a slight addendum here I've realized that I've missed out telling you how to make the lightning pop in and out of existence when the uh, Tesla call is turned on and off which is probably going to be something you want to know how to do it's quite simple to do really I mean I'm just going to press S to scale and even though I press S to scale and it sort of increases the amount of lightning rather than anything else if I press S followed by zero the lightning does disappear I'm going to just press escape there to make it come back. So, unfortunately, if we look at here, the problem we had before is we've not just got keyframes here in rotation. We do have keyframes in scale as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off all of the ones apart from the scale. And press A, A, and delete the keyframes. And I'm going to turn everything back on. So that now I'll have deleted the keyframes that control the scale of this piece of lightning. And I'm now just going to do the same for the other one. I'm going to turn that lot off. I'm just pressing the delete key there to delete them. What I'm going to do on frame 20, I'm going to have them both pop into existence. So I can select both of them and I'm going to press I scaling now oh, it's the got rid of chord button on there that's why I was calling these keyframes before and I'm going to go back one frame and I'm going to press S for scale followed by zero followed by return I scaling so now you can see that it pops in existence on frame 20 there um, and then on frame 70 I'll have them pop out of existence so again press i for insert keyframe in scaling and then go to the next frame scale zero i scaling keyframe i mean as you've seen before if we press scale we can actually do quite a bit of stuff with this we can sort of change the amount of lightning so i'm going to create another keyframe of in there i scaling so it actually gets bigger but well, I've already rendered this. And